didn't know. No one ever told me. Because this is one of those birth pains. Everyone will have heard it. Everyone will have heard it. Revelation 14, 6 to 7. This will be the last opportunity to be saved. Because this is the last contraction before Jesus appears with the saints to defeat the armies of earth to gather for the battle of Armageddon. Their last chance. Their last chance. This is seven years of horrible, horrible things. If you were alive today and know Jesus Christ, you won't experience any of it. You'll be in heaven. I thought I'd list a few of these things to remind us of things that can look for reasons why God might be coming back as things continue to get worse. But these aren't contractions. Anything you see in your lifetime is not a contraction. It is not a birth pain. The wedding has not happened yet. These are some of the things. The beast is not here yet. It's not here. One world government is not here yet. Worldwide peace agreement, the Antichrist, the temple being completely finished in Jerusalem. The mark of the beast, great warfare, famine, quarter of the earth's population dying by sword, famine, plague, and beast. A devastating earthquake, the sun turning black, a blood red moon, people hiding in caves, painful sores, all sea life dying, sun getting hotter, darkness and sores getting worse, large hailstones, and the Antichrist gathering armies for Armageddon. You will not see those in your lifetime. First comes love, then comes marriage, then comes those birth pains. They have to happen in that order. Will you see earthquakes? Yes. But nothing like what's going to happen then. Will you see maybe even experience the pandemic? Yes. But nothing like what's going to happen then. If you have boils on your skin now, you could. But nothing like what's going to happen then. Will people die in wars? Yes. But nothing like what's going to happen then. No one alive during those seven years is going to miss out on any of these things. They're going to experience all of it. All of it. It will be terrible. But while all of this is happening on earth, believers will be in heaven celebrating the wedding feast with Jesus. We have not missed the wedding. It has not happened yet. You are not in the middle of the worst seven years creation has ever experienced. It may seem bad, but this isn't it. You can't look for signs that there's a baby coming and there's no wedding yet. And there's no marriage yet. So the same truth you've known since the playground. First comes love, then comes marriage, then comes the baby. Remind yourself of this when someone says, well, this must be the mark of the beast. You can go, nope, I'm not wearing my wedding dress yet. God hasn't given me my reward. The graduation day hasn't happened. This isn't it. Or if someone says, that person has to be the Antichrist. Nope. You may think they are really bad, and they could be really bad, but they're not going to be that bad. And they're not going to be that convincing. These things are going to happen, they're going to be terrible, and I hope that you don't ever experience them. It should scare us a little bit that there will be people that will live through this. People you may know. Now signs for the rapture, there's only one. That trumpet's gonna blow. Actually two, Archangel's voice as well. Look for those things. Look for those things. Because that's the only thing we're waiting on before we go up. That's it. It can happen at any time. At any time. And once the bride is out, then the tribulation happens. Which tells us and should remind us that that could start if he calls us up today. Tribulation could start tomorrow. If he calls us up a year from now, tribulation will start the day after we're out of here. So, the Bible says some very clear things and two words Jesus emphatically says to us and to everyone who reads God's word, everyone that should ever hear about these things, be ready. Be ready so that when that trumpet blows, that voice, the archangel comes out, you're going up and not left behind. Be ready. There's only one way to be ready. You have to know Jesus as your Savior. Not just facts about him. 
It's not enough just to believe and that the cross happened. It's not enough just to say, well, yes, I think Jesus died for sins. It's not enough even just to say, yeah, I'm, I'm sure he was buried and rose again. It needs to be personal. You need to know it in your heart that he died because of your sins. He experienced that pain because of what you do and have done and will do. He did it for you. When that breaks you down to your knees and you realize that you deserve that punishment because of the bad things you've done, but that Jesus, God's only son, the perfect lamb of God who had never sinned, willingly took your place and your punishment on the cross and died a horrible death, humiliating death for you so that you could have eternal life. And only because of what he did, only because of what he did, will you not only be called up with the bride, will you not only receive the rewards of righteousness that only comes to the saints, not only will you get to spend eternity in heaven and get that perfect body, but you also get to skip the tribulation. You won't experience any of it. When all these terrible things are happening in the earth, you won't be here for it. Could it happen soon? Yes. Is it happening now? No. I don't look like a bride yet. I don't want to wear a wedding dress now. That's not going to work either. i got to get those righteous things that God has promised me. Those rewards, that graduation that has to happen, that wedding that has to happen. And we can look forward and we can be excited about that. You know that each day we're alive, we're getting closer. Each minute, it's a minute closer to that wedding day. Jesus says very clearly, be ready. Are you ready? Do you know Jesus Christ is your Savior? If you don't, you need to have that conversation with God. You tell him you believe you're a sinner. No, Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. And he was buried and rose again because of what he did and what he did alone. You could have eternal life. When you do that, Holy Spirit comes in you, sealed for that day. That peace comes over you because you know that you have been loved unconditionally and now you have a relationship with the Savior. And you can have confidence because now that living hope we've been talking about means that you won't experience anything in the tribulation. None of it. There's a few verses you have at the end of your notes there. Matthew 24, 36, verse 42, and verse 44, Mark 13, 32, and Acts 1, 7. Jesus said, but of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Verse 42, watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. Verse 44, therefore, you also be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Mark 13, 33, take heed, watch and pray, for you do not know when the time is. And Acts 1, 17, 1, 7, he said to them, it is not for you to know the time this season which the Father has put in his own authority. Jesus could come back today. Are you ready? Don't put it off. If you know someone, and I pray that God does put someone in your heart you need to talk to, talk to them. Share with them Matthew 24. And share with them that the only way to get out of this, the only way to get out of this, is to know Jesus before it happens. Encourage them. If someone thinks that these terrible events are happening, ask them, are you ready if Jesus comes back? Make sure they're ready. Then you can tell them once they are ready. Praise the Lord, you're ready now. You're not going to experience any of that stuff you were watching for. So if you, hopefully don't forget anything from today. Hopefully you continue to study God's word and look at these things. But at the very least, please remember that little ditty from the playground. First comes love, then comes marriage, then comes the baby. Then comes those birth pains. Then comes those severe contractions that tell us that Jesus is ready to come back and is about to come back. On the earth, with the white horse, to fight the battle for us, to usher in his millennial reign on the earth. And if you're reading your Bible, you know that after that millennial reign, Everything is destroyed. The new heaven and the new earth are created. New Jerusalem comes down. And then you start what we're all looking for. 
that eternity with God in perfect imperfection, when all sin is gone, when all sorrow ceases, when all crying is gone, when it's just pure excitement and everything you get to do with that new body, that's when you get to enjoy eternity. I look forward to that day. I look forward to that day. But for now, the great next thing that's going to happen is that Jesus is going to come back and blow that horn. Arch Archangel's voice is going to shout. And I'll be ushered up with hopefully you to receive that perfect body we've been waiting for. To go up on that graduation day, on that wedding day, receive the reward. And it starts to enjoy heaven. Those left behind will not be pleasant. So please. Please share the living hope you have with them. Share the confidence you have with them. Share the word of God with them. Help them, remind them. Be ready. Be ready. We thank you for coming today. I encourage you to keep reading your Bibles. Next week we're going to have a special guest here. A special missionary is going to be preaching. A wonderful friend of mine. I encourage you to come back to that if you can. Javier Pizarro will be here. We'll be taking up a love offering that day for him. Keep praying for your friends and neighbors. Keep praying for the government. Pray for your governor. Pray for me. I'm praying for you. I pray that God will continue to allow us to worship in this way, reach as many people as we can. Pray with me one final time. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for that little playground saying we learned so long ago. I pray that we would remember it, it would direct us right to your word. That the Holy Spirit would remind us of the scriptures and passages that speak of the things to come. Remind us of what has to happen first. I do pray, Father, that everyone here today is ready. That they're ready. That they have the confidence that only can come from knowing Jesus Christ as their Savior. Confidence in knowing that when those things happen, we won't be here. We thank you, Father, for the promise you have in your word, the seal of the Holy Spirit, that there will be a wedding day. We thank you, Father, that today we can worship you, and each day we can worship you, and part of our worship, part of our living sacrifice is to share the truth with others, to be that salt and light, because there will come a day when the salt and light won't be here. We thank you, Father, for the opportunities that are before us to be ambassadors for you and share these truths and your love with those you put before us. We just thank you again, Father, for this beautiful day. For all these things, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. one for me. Um, I, I find myself a lot of times in situations like, you know, like this with the quarantine and the pandemic and everything like that, that uh, I find myself asking God a lot of questions, but not really listening for the answer. You know, um, uh, I feel like sometimes I need to be put in my place, um, so that's what this song is kind of about.